Hey everyone, today I'm going to be talking about a new feature that is now possible with VO3. I'm sure you've seen a lot of videos that's been going around social media lately where there are people talking, it looks very realistic, a lot of people are making funny videos, funny memes with it. But the biggest issue we had was the lack of control when it came to consistency or like camera angles, like exact precise camera angles. But you can now feed it an image and now it will generate a video based on that image and it will make your image move and talk. And the reason this is such a big deal is because now you can have more control and consistency when it comes to your characters and your scenes. So we're going to be doing a few tests to see how this works and what has changed because before we had to be very descriptive. Everybody had their little technique and their own little way of prompting this so that they can get exactly what they want and get consistency. But now that won't be an issue anymore when you have other ways to get consistent images and essentially create your actors. The great thing about this is you can generate images and try to get consistent characters. Like in this case, I'm using Sora here. Here I have a bunch of images I generated of this character. I generated this using a pretty generic prompt of an action hero. And from there, I can use this image in something like Sora, ChatGPT, Midjourney, training in Laura and using this in Comfy UI. I mean, there's a lot of options out there. And you're throwing away a lot less credits because now you pretty much know what you're going to get. So the way you do this, uh, you're going to go into Google Labs and then Flow, Create with Flow. You're going to select a new project. And then once you have a new project, you're going to come here to where it says Frames to Video. So you might want to change to VO3 fast because you use less credits that way. You can use VO3 quality if you want, but I would recommend starting with fast, see what you get, and then go from there. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to upload the image. So just for the sake of this video, I had ChatGPT uh, write up some dialogue for me. So I'm just going to feed it this. So I'm going to upload the image. I'm going to put this image of this guy here. Uh, maybe I can uh, close this so that it can be a white. Now that I have the image there, normally in the past, we would have to like describe what the man looks like, what the background looks like, and a bunch of stuff. Um, in this case, we don't have to be as descriptive, but we can tell it like, uh, we want this man walking, we want this man running, we want this man turning around or something, right? So the prompts could be more of like actions and what they're going to say. For this, I'm going to say, have the man walking forward and saying, and then I'm just going to put quotation marks, put the line, and then let's see what this gives us. All right, so this is the generation. Let's see how it sounds. This is my first time listening to it just like you guys, so. People think this city's just noise and lights, but underneath the surface, it's rot, rusted peel, <laughs> blood in the gutters. It looks great. It seems like something got messed up in the dialogue there. Steel, broken prod in the gutters. Oh, broken promises. It's supposed to say broken promises, and it says broken bro. Depending on how fast the character's delivering the lines, it can limit what they say from the script. So the video generations are typically eight seconds, so Whatever it can say within those eight seconds, that's what they're going to say. I, I think that little hiccup, it's because he's trying to say a certain amount of words within a small time frame. Maybe if I just like remove this part and just say promises, broken promises. Let's see if, if that improves it. It's rot, rusted steel, broken promises. So now he says promises the right way. He doesn't fumble his words. Just be aware of that, that if it's too long, and it might fumble some words because it's trying to get through a certain amount of words before it gets cut off by the end of the video. That's what was happening, I believe. So this time I'm going to do a close up and I'm going to upload this image of this man. And this is the issue that I think it's going to get a lot of complaints. I try to upload this image and I'm getting this this thing right here. That's going to be very annoying for people because I think what it's trying to do is trying to block people from uploading images of celebrities or famous characters. And this character, I generated it. It's not like a famous actor. It's not supposed to be a famous actor or look like a famous actor. You can say he looks like, you know, Max Payne or somebody, but it's not this person. It's not supposed to be that person. This is where things are going to get tricky, unfortunately. Okay, um, that's weird. Now, I, I did it a few times and it finally let me put the person in there. So they're going to have to figure out a way to better filter this because I think a lot of people are going to be upset if they cannot upload an image of something like a, a character, an actor or something that they want to generate. It's, it's going to be very disruptive and annoying to have to deal with this. Some of us have already experienced this if you've ever used 
runway, sometimes the way it censors you, sometimes the things that trigger it to not want to generate something is hard to understand why. What, what what doesn't give you a reason, specific reason. It just says like, you can't use this image. And this is why a lot of people like open source because with open source, you don't get these kind of messages. You just generate whatever and there is no censoring. Some other advice that I want to give you, something that I personally like to do is change the output per prompts because by default it's at two, I believe. And I like to just put one because it allows me to kind of see what my prompt is going to do. And if I need to change something, I can change it and not have to spend unnecessary credits, get a feel of it. If you really feel like your prompt is strong, you're getting good results and you want to get two results, then you can put it to two after that and then just let it go from there. All right, let's see what it gives us. Blood in the gutters. I've seen it all. I used to believe in fixing it. Thought maybe a badge, a code would be enough. Oh, that's so cool. That is so sick. Okay. Um, so technically I think you can do scenes and you can edit things together. So let's go ahead and create a scene. Hey everyone, this is E and I'm editing the video right now. And I, I wanted to mention something about scene builder. When it comes to getting consistent voice, uh, Dave Clark here says that the best way so far is just adding it to scene builder and prompting extend from there. It appears to remember certain things from the previous video, etc. You can try this and see if it works for you. I was able to get some pretty consistent voices without having to do this, but it could be that this helps. So yeah, you can try this if you like. So I'm going to come here to where it says add to scene uh, it's going to take me here but i believe i can go back and then add another one into the scene there you go and now we have these two here and then i can arrange them uh, i move this one here all right so let's go ahead and play this people think this city is just noise and lights but underneath the surface it's rot rusted steel broken promises blood in the gutters i've seen it all I used to believe in fixing it. Thought maybe a badge, a code would be enough. Yeah, that that, that is really cool. The I, And I know some of you guys will point this out, but the background is not consistent for this one and this one. This looks like he's more in an alley, like almost like on a street. And this is just like a more open area, it seems like. So there's ways to get around this because now you just have to try to manipulate an image versus trying to manipulate an entire video, right? You can go into editing software, try to change the background, maybe generate this with green screen and then add the background later, or there's ways around this. And before it was uh, to do that, you really, you know, weren't sure if you're going to get the same generation. And now you don't have to worry about how is VO3 going to generate the background. Like it's almost like a, a slot machine of like guessing, okay, what is it going to give me? This is such a cool thing. I'm not going to say it, it's a game changer because everybody says that. Um, but I will say like, this is really where the industry is now starting to really, really pay attention because now yep, we're getting very realistic performances. It doesn't look totally uncanny. So I went ahead and did like a whole dialogue and used different locations. It was just, just to show what's possible and how you can have like a consistent character in different scenes and scenarios. So let's watch it. People think this city is just noise and lights, but underneath the surface, it's rot. Rusted steel, broken promises, blood in the gutters. I've seen it all. I used to believe in fixing it. I thought maybe a badge, a cause, a code would be enough. But this place, when it doesn't forgive, and it never forgets. I think all of these were pretty, pretty funny. For the last one, I think the voice changes, but for the all the other voices, they sound like the exact same person. But you can kind of see that this guy looks like it's the same person, right? But I think the next level to this is to be able to get voice actors or have the AI generate some kind of dialogue that you already edited or that you already like, and then use that to drive the video. I think that's the next level. So who is this for? This is mainly for people who are making a living off of this, I would say because of the price point, because it's really expensive to justify the cost. You either have to be some kind of content creator who is making a living off of this or who is doing this for clients, which that's how I was able to use it because I was doing it for clients. So essentially the money comes out of their pocket. But if someone wants to spend their money for fun and just play around with this, obviously you can do that. Hey, have fun. Go for it. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining me in this demonstration of image to video. Hopefully you guys liked it. And until next time, like always, take care and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.